I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about stages your ex goes through while in no contact. This is a big topic. Yes, it is. And a lot of people ask about this, so we're gonna talk about this today. We got some really good info on this one. We wanted to thank you though for all the support that you guys give us. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, for buying the workbooks and doing coachings with us. We really appreciate that. And we just wanted to thank you and let you know that we really do appreciate that. I want to say thank you too. Yeah. And thank you for learning the material. I get wonderful feedback. I learned this from watching your video. Yeah. Those are, that's music to our ears. Yeah. And, and one of the big things that I've been hearing a lot is people that are doing Skypes with me uh -huh. are getting referred to by people that have gotten coachings with us yes. in the past. Yes. And so that's so great to hear that it, it means a lot to us that you share our work with other people. Yes. So please continue to do so. Um, we really do appreciate that. You know, um, obviously when you're going through the breakup and the relationship ends, you're going through so much hurt and pain. Right. And all we care about, all really, we really want is to reconnect with that person, to repair it, to talk with them, to let them know we'll fix things. And it's incredibly difficult because oftentimes our ex is just adamant that they are, they are done. done. Yeah. And they say that a lot. I'm done. We're never going to get back together. And, you know, especially in the beginning, it just feels completely hopeless. Like, they're never going to change your mind. A lot of times you've done things like that uh, grand gesture, the handwritten letter, or the good reminder text that other coaches tell you to do, right. and it doesn't work. And so you're like, well, nothing's going to work. And, you know, it just feels like it's going to stay the same way forever. And then there's Taylor Swift, who said we are never, ever getting back together yeah. in her song. Yes. <laughs> A lot of people sing that song. Yes. But you'd be surprised how many come back, right? You know, it's important for you guys to understand this. And I really wish I had known this when I was going through my breakups. But feelings really do change. And today, we're going to look at how it often happens, right? Yes. You're going to see the process of how do feelings change. The stages and the things that your ex goes through, the dumper goes through that you think they're just done with you, but there's a lot more that they're going through and experiencing that you don't realize, right. okay? So this is why it's so crucial, in my opinion, to act like you're gonna get another chance with them at some point, right? Right. Because if you stay motivated and that opportunity comes, you're gonna be a lot more likely to get them back again. When you've worked through attachment issues that you have, when you learn the skills that we teach to communicate better, to uh, understand your needs, their needs, a relationship needs, when you work through all those things, you're gonna be able to blow your ex away. But when you're sitting there every day just thinking it's hopeless, where are they at, what are they doing, they're with somebody new, they're never gonna come back, you're not gonna learn, you're not gonna stay motivated. You see that too, right? Yes, you owe it to yourself to take care of you. But people are in such states of um, despair. It's yeah. painful to watch. Yeah. So please, <clears throat> act as if you're going to get one more chance. It's the best way to keep yourself motivated to, to grow at the, at the highest level or the top level that right. you can. I want to see you get in front of your ex and be ready and be over prepared. Then when I get, I got an email a little while ago, right before we filmed this about somebody who 
uh, got their ex back. They hadn't done enough hadn't work. Done the work. They admitted they hadn't done the workbooks. They hadn't been working on themselves, and now they're broke up and they're devastated again. And the same thing happens yeah. again if nothing has changed, right? So, let's talk about the stages that your ex goes through because they really do go through some stages. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be for every situation. Every breakup is different, but this is a pattern. These are general patterns that we yeah. see, right? <clears throat> yeah. So the first one we see is relief. Right. I finally did it. I broke up with Craig. It was so hard because he was so adorable. <laughs> relief is probably the first stage for most breakups, right? right? Because your ex has been <clears throat> stressed out about the relationship. Something's been bothering them. Whatever it is, your situation is unique. And as painful it is as it is to hear this, because when someone breaks up with you, you don't want them to feel relieved. You want them to feel sad. Yes. <laughs> I want them to be sad too. And terrible and awful, yes. But that's just not the way it goes. Even in situations that, you know, get back together, there's just a sense of relief. Like they were feeling an internal struggle that, they were unhappy enough that they felt like they needed to change this, right? Right. They don't always want to, but for some reason they feel that they need to. Mm -hmm. And the literature really agrees that most people think about a breakup for months, weeks, a long time before they actually do it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, to add on to the relief, I think that people that have an avoidant attachment style are even more relieved. Right, because they were terrified of the relationship even though part of them wanted it. Yeah. yeah. The struggle for them to be in a relationship right. is more difficult if you're secure or you're anxious. So for them, they like that space. They need that space. That feels comfortable to them. So for them, the relief is even more like... <sighs> right. Absolutely. Oh, I'm free again. I'm not going to be smothered yeah. or, yeah. Now, the other thing that we like to get into to help you understand things more clearly is your ex's mental health. Right. Not everybody is functioning extremely high in life. A lot of you guys are struggling or a lot of your exes are struggling with anxiety, sure. depression, depression, trauma. Yep. What do you think about that for those people that have been depressed or anxious? Oh, I think, well, I think it's worse for the person who's left, and I think for the person who leaves, they expect to feel wonderful forever, and of course it's only going to last for a period of time. Yeah. Yeah, because you feel the relief, and then you go through the other stages, which we're going to go through. Yeah. But of course, any mental difficulties you have, any trauma history you have, and a huge number of the folks we talk with have a trauma history. Yeah. Um, then it's going to bring back all sorts of ugly stuff. It's a very difficult process. Yeah. Right. So there's a good chance that maybe the anxiety or the depression that your ex was feeling at the time will go away and tempor temporarily be relieved. Yes. But then... Before they know it, they're going to get hit back again with oh, depression. Oh, eventually they're going to have to deal with it. They'll do a few things to avoid yeah. it, but eventually they're going to have to reckon with the loss. Yeah. yeah. You know, in that relief stage, you have to realize that your ex was struggling with the relationship. And you may have not even known because sometimes they don't tell us or sometimes we don't realize the problem was as bad. So, you know, you'll hear uh, like the grass is greener syndrome. Yes. Right? To me, I don't think it's a syndrome. I just think it's a natural part of life to consider your other options. Yeah. And if you haven't been a good partner or you have neglected their needs and not listened to their mm -hmm. you know, struggles or things that are bothering them, they're going to feel like somebody else will care more maybe or yeah. will make I those changes. I can do better in some way or other. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to have a big impact on the relief. Yes. Right? One of the other things that you may have noticed right before the breakup is that your ex could have been picking on you more, like finding more faults right. in you, right. things that they didn't like about you, and started complaining about things that were like of little real importance. Right. And maybe a TV show that you liked. You're going to watch that show again? And it's like, you never complained about this and before. And you didn't clean up the kitchen fast enough. 
Yeah. Right. So that may have been something that you saw in your situation that they were nitpicking about things. And that often tells you that they're unhappy with you, that they're nitpicking. The other thing I hear often is we've been fighting for a long time. My next question is always, what have you been fighting about? And they can never tell me mm -hmm. until I give them, you know, multiple choice. Mm -hmm. um, but what it really comes down to is how much closeness and how much distance each of them wants. Mm -hmm. That's usually the underlying issue in the fight. Yeah, yep. that's a huge part of it, right. which is why you have to work on your attachment issues, right. because that's a big part of attachment, right? right? right. Um, now, what happens with the dump E, right, is you're devastated, you're trying to figure out how to get them back, and you're likely pushing them. If you, you can, know? yeah. Yeah, you're contacting them. You're uh, doing grand gestures, handwritten letters. You're pursuing them. You're stopping by their work or their job, uh, you know, their house. Right. And it's just making them more angry and more hostile right. towards you. Yeah. So trying to reconnect early on in the process is a disaster usually. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you're on two exact ends of the spectrum. Right. They're relieved and they're like, oh, I, I got feel so much better. Yeah, I feel better that... I got this over with. Now, that doesn't mean they were 100% about it, but there is a sense of relief to yes. it, right? And in the meantime, the person who's been dumped um, is probably busy blaming themselves. Yes. And going over every conversation. If I had said this, if I hadn't said that, and usually they're not even close to what really happened. Yep, okay? exactly. But I keep saying, don't beat yourself up. It's not well spent energy. You need that energy to heal. Yes, you want to focus the energy yeah. on what you're going to do yes. to grow from this. For you, yeah. And we have hundreds of videos focused on personal growth. Yeah. Not just, you know, trying to get an X back. You know, we're trying to help you grow so you have a win either way. Either you get your X back or you are a much better, more confident version of yourself with actual real skills to implement in your next relationship, your next relationship. Right? so you can't lose by working on yourself absolutely right. um, I would say the next big thing that your ex is going to go through now remember we're talking about feelings are changing here right relief the next one is elation free at last free mm -hmm. at last yep they're happy they're feeling like they can do whatever they want whenever they want without any consequences right now, if you've been a controlling partner, they might feel more elated. I'm going to act out and be just as naughty as I want. That's right. I'm going to go to bars whenever I feel like it. I'm going to see 10 people that I met on some dating app. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other thing, Margaret, is that when people are depressed, mm -hmm. if somebody's been depressed mm -hmm. and they break up with you, they go from that relief, talk about the elation they would feel. Well, that would be even better. If you were depressed when you were with your partner, which was probably not the partner's fault, and yeah. I see that often, but the partner gets blamed for it. So you're going to feel spectacular for a while since you temporarily are free of the depression you may mm -hmm. have had for years before the relationship. Yep. So you're going to have a wonderful time. And lots of times people act out wildly in ways they never normally would. Yes. Okay. And I and saw this have, with the Applebee's girl. Yes. Yeah. And they have no thought that this feeling will end. Yeah. But it does. Of course it does. But in the beginning, they often do things you would never expect of right. them. Spend time with people. You're like, what? Yep. Like the Applebee's girl, she was going out and drinking and partying. And I'm like, this is not her at all. Yeah. At all. And then, undoubtedly, what I like to call the ubiquitous third party <laughs> manages, some common friend, manages to tell you that your ex looks great because they just saw them out in a restaurant with another guy or girl. Mm -hmm. And then you're sure it's all over and they've gone off with someone else. Oh, yeah. Probably not. Yeah, posting on social media yeah. how happy they are right. and they yeah. look so happy. It's devastating. And they tell their friends and family how brave they were to end the relationship and how much better they feel. Yep. Which is tricky because if you get the person back, you don't want to have said too much. Yep. So, you know, they're going to do a lot of things that you wouldn't expect them to. Act out in ways that you're surprised in their character. And it's because, you know, they've been feeling unhappy 
and it might not even have been your fault, like Margaret said. Probably not. But that they are just, they can't, they're like wild right now. Yep. And it's normal. Yep. Right? So they're up and you're down at the pits. Yes, it's like you're on the exact opposite, opposite. ends. In the in early the stages of yes. this, yes. Brutal. So at this point, your ex is really content with the way things are. Now, that doesn't mean they don't think about you. They do. That doesn't mean that they aren't curious about how things are or regretting it at times. They do. But for the most part, they're feeling this relief. There's a, a, a elation, especially if you haven't left them alone. You know, they're now they're getting the highs of you still want me. You still want me back and I can do whatever I want. Right. And you can't do anything about it. Yeah. So it's really important that you how you start leaving them alone so they can really experience other feelings other than happiness that you still want me. It feels nice to be wanted and yet I can do whatever I want and know that you're there if I change my mind. And you don't want to make that easy for them. No, you don't. No. Um, all right. So then after the elation wears away and the, the excitement of doing whatever you want and the freedom of that, you know, kind of, it's boring, right? It does eventually. Well, or you run out of energy because you <laughs> stayed out too late doing all this wonderful stuff. Yeah. Uh, then you start to think about maybe who you're dating and who, and you. So they start to compare, right? And I've had an ex actually tell me this before that she was comparing me mm -hmm. to the guy she was dating. And so it happens, right? They're, they're not always going to tell you this. So it doesn't come up often in my calls, but it does happen. It does happen. That they're thinking about you. They're thinking about what this new person is like. And a lot of times the excitement of this new person that looks so great and wonderful, they don't attach, right? It's just the excitement and the lust and the passion that people experience. And even if they are with somebody else, remember, the initial honeymoon stage eventually ends. I've seen people break up with someone, get engaged to someone new, and then just a few months later come begging and screaming and even stalking to get them back, the dumpy back. Right. So um, you can expect that they are going to consider who their new options are with you. And they're going to remember all the good times. And you may definitely win in a comparison. Yeah. Um, they'll look at your Instagram. They'll look at your Facebook. Uh, they'll block you and they'll unblock you because they're curious, right? right? See how the che feelings are changing, right? How it goes through relief, elation. Now you're wondering, you're comparing, right. you're you're kind of grieving, and you're, right? you may be starting to remember some of the good times that you had. Exactly. The weekend at the beach. Yeah. You know, the wonderful party you went to together. They'll, they'll go to places that you went together. I had a guy recently go to his ex's neighborhood to walk the dog. And I'm thinking, he's processing. That's right. He's thinking about her and yep. the relationship and if it was sure. really the right thing to do to end it. Because why else would you go there? Right. right? Yeah. He didn't know what he was doing, but... That's what he was doing. He was processing. And that's what I said. Yeah. He didn't, I don't, I didn't think he knew what he was doing no. either. So at this point, what kind of happens with your ex is they are starting to think a little bit more clearly. They're more balanced, right? Right. They're in a place where they're not so angry at you, blaming you for everything, you know, accusing you of all of the problems in the relationship, which they did in the beginning, especially those first few stages right right they're in a place where they're actually thinking about you know boy i have a temper maybe they start yelling at the new person they're dating and they're like oh oh wow yeah you know what maybe this is my maybe she wasn't fault. all wrong yeah. yeah maybe i have some issues here too and they start to look at the whole relationship that you had with more of a clear head and a balance of okay yeah, they did these things, but they also did these good things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think that the ex will start to think about the nice memories with you Absolutely. and compare. Absolutely. But it's important that your ex isn't just blaming you for everything still, because it's going to be hard to work with them if they're not at least taking some responsibility right. 
for the relationship not working, right? Because right. you both created the relationship together. So you really have to focus on those skills. You have to work through your attachment issues because if you don't, you're going to be really likely to do them again if they come back or right. in your next relationship, right? Right. So um, you can see that the, the sh there's a shift in the feelings, right? They're changing. Now, through all of this, they could be going through these little bit at a time, right? It's yes, not that's like, right. And they're not always in perfect order. Exactly. Um, but eventually, the sadness is going to start to seep in. Yep. To the person who has been relieved and elated, and now they're thinking again about you, and they're beginning to feel the loss. Because as human beings, loss is never okay with us, and it's never a neutral subject. Say that again, that's right. important. Because we're human beings, loss is always a major issue for us. The way we're made is to be terrified of a loss, uh, and our unconscious gets very unhappy because we expect every good relationship to be forever. So even though you ended it, you're going to miss this person. There's no way around it. Yeah. Okay. So eventually the dumper is going to become sad. Yes. He's, yes. Okay. He's going to grieve or she's going to grieve you. Yes. Now you're going to have a much better chance of turning it around if you've left them alone to miss you, yeah. to, to regret their decision, right. that they don't think they can just pick up the phone, call you, and they're going to get you back because they're not going to regret the decision if it's that easy. Right. Right? And so they've got to go through all these things themselves, and they've got to get to a place where they're afraid they're going to lose you or look at your Instagram and see, wow, they're in shape and they're looking good and you're posting uh, something positive here and there, not too much, but you know, they're gonna be looking and they're gonna be wondering or asking people that you know how right. you're doing. How is so-and-so doing? Yeah. And I, I often say they really wanna know if you've picked up with someone else. That's what they really wanna know. Yeah, because right. there's the regret right. when they're scared that yes. they can lose you as well. Yes. And you know, this is about the point where the the wondering starts to build up enough to where they might like a Facebook picture or an Instagram post or watch your stories. Yep. And then comes what we all know I call the indirect direct approach, right? Yes. They don't want to pick up the phone and say, I miss you. That's terrifying. They don't want to own it either. They don't want to own it. That's right. And they don't know what you're going to do. You may be angry and hostile towards them, right? right? that if, if you reach out or they reach out and you could be like, the hell with you. Now they're going to feel rejected and that's painful. So enjoy that. Perversely enjoy that little piece. Yeah. Okay. When, when he or she has to struggle about contacting you again. Yeah. Yeah. And I got one from the Applebee's girl, mm -hmm. right? Yes, you, you, you were did. there the day that yes, I got it. You I did. And so yep. Margaret at the office. Right. And she apologized and said, I just want to let you know that I'm sorry that the guy she had left to date dumped her and that she thought that I deserved to know. I don't know if I've talked about this much in the videos. No, you haven't. Um, but I did think about it the other day that she said, and I thought you deserved to have this and know about this because one day somebody's going to do it to him or the girl that he left her to be with will do it to him and I want to know about it when it happens. She was talking, she also mentioned karma, yeah. I believe. So she did. She was feeling a bit guilty. Yeah. Yep. She did. She said, I know I hurt you very much. I think she said that almost word for word in yep. the message. I think she did. And, and she knew that I cared about her. And she, I'm sure she felt very bad about that. Um, to her credit. Yeah. She, there was a lot of wonderful qualities to her. And that's why it was such a hard breakup, you know. But, you know, because she hadn't had a chance to live and be young and immature and free she wasn't ready to get into another really serious relationship right and those are the people who most enjoy the elation and you know we do find out that there are people who were married early on or had children early on and they haven't had time to play and be adolescents and you can't skip a stage you have to go back at some point and recapture some of it and that's exactly what she did right that's exactly yeah. what she did and i didn't realize this back at the time i didn't understand this but, you know, knowing what I know now, I don't 
beat myself up about what happened. It was a lot of circumstances. And many of you guys are in situations that it's circumstances, other things, mental health, all um, kinds individuation, of yes. attachment issues. Absolutely. Um, all of those things could lead to a breakup. Right. Right. And yep. we think that, um, but, but we just own everything. Right. Even the things that aren't ours. Right. At but, least in the beginning, if you're the dumpy, you're sure it's your fault. Yeah. But that's when your ex gets to a point where they're missing you, they're thinking about you, they're wondering about you, they do an indirect, direct approach, and that's where you Let's take it from Let's give some there. examples. What's an indirect, direct approach? Okay, well, the indirect, I call it the indirect, direct approach because a direct approach would be to say, I miss you, can we talk? I miss you, can, we see, can I see you? That's direct, but they're never that direct or very, very rarely. It's more like, by the way, I found uh, an old notebook of yours from college. I thought you might need it. Or right. uh, I saw uh, your brother on a commercial recently. Was that really him? Yeah. Any bizarre, yeah. confusing thing that any, it's an excuse. They're looking for a reason to contact you without saying, I miss you, because that's too difficult for them. And some people, uh, get upset about that. They want more. Or even, I've even heard other coaches said that you shouldn't take that. That's breadcrumbs, and you should want more. Well, that may be all they're able to that's give. That's all they can do at the moment, and it depends on how you feel about them. If you've moved on by that time, too bad. Yeah. Um, but that's why we say don't ignore your ex. No. If they reach out to you, respond. That's right. Right. But. You don't want to ignore them. I don't know why coaches say to ignore because that. what if you ignore them and then they never reach out again? Yeah. What, but what if they're thinking about you for months on end after that one reach out, right? Mm -hmm. So why take the chance? I don't like to take that risk. Right. But as you can see, feelings change from the beginning to having time to process and deal with it and to experience the loss of you. And... You can only help your chances by growing uh, with your own emotional maturity and your mental health and focusing on the areas of your life that you want to improve. Mm -hmm. And that will only make you look that much more attractive to them when they do come back around again. That's right. So hopefully this is a good idea. Of course, like I said, every situation is different that we see with a lot of breakups and how it leads to reconciliation. But the first thing people say to us is, I know he's not thinking about me. I know she's not thinking about me. Yeah. Um, I saw that she had gone onto two dating sites and somebody told me she looks or he looks great. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so the most common question we get is what's going on with the person who did the dumping. Yeah. But people can go on with their life and for years be thinking about you. I think the record I've heard was like 30 something years. Oh yes. Exes came back after 30 something years. And, and before the computer, it was much harder to do that. But now you can find your high school sweetheart without too much stress. Absolutely, you know? yeah. yeah. The girl you never forgot, the guy you never forgot. And believe me, that happens a lot more than you oh, realize. Oh yes, it does. Yeah. All right, so if you like the video, put a thumbs up there. If you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Of course, Margaret is available for Skype coaching. Yes, if you feel that I can be helpful to you, please sign up. And I've been heavily booked and thank you so much for your faith. And I'm sorry you have to wait. Yep. She's worth the wait. Yep. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.